Hi everyone. Hope everybody is doing great. Today we are going to talk about an interesting topic that is why your government buses suspension systems are very poor or rather when you feel you feel so much of bumpy in the suspension system, right? So we are going to touch upon the engineering topic goes behind behind the discomfortness that caused by the uh, suspension system in the government buses which most of you would have felt right so the question goes very simple that whenever you sit in the buses right in front in the middle and the front you won't experience so much of bump isn't it right but when you go towards the edge of the vehicle whenever the driver gets into a bump all of a sudden you feel a jerk right so try to think about it why is it so why is it always the buses rear end suspension is very b- badly designed right so we're going to come up with a logical reasoning to it so the idea behind it it's very simple right so to understand that we're going to talk about we're going to model a quota car from there we'll introspect why your uh, discomfortness that's caused by your buses is coming from right so basically what we do is we classify into suspension into two two types one is sprung mass the mass which are bared by the uh, springs of your suspension another one is unsprung mass right so typically what happens is the mass which are bared by the spring has to be comparatively higher right so think about it what are the masses that comes under sprung mass be it a passenger who is sitting in the vehicle right your engine your chassis everything comes under sprung mass so obviously your sprung mass is going to be higher than unsprung mass on the other hand think about a components in unsprung mass such as component that comes under the suspension system such as your tire rim brake housing liners all that so what we do is we always make sure only 10 to 15 percentage of your sprung mass is dedicated to unsprung mass right this is the thumb rule in industry right but this is not so in the buses why is it you might have seen the big bulky differentials in the buses right which is quite heavier in nature so what happens now due to the big bulky differentials when you get into a speed breaker because your unsprung mass is comparatively heavier right you disturb the sprung mass right so the whole idea is since you you have a big bulky differential in the unsprung mass which is going to be heavier the whole idea is to decrease the unsprung mass weight hence you will better get a better ride right so the engineering concept that goes behind is to calculate come up with the equation of motion right so why we are going to come up with the equation of motion to identify and understand the system is we have end of end of the day from the quota car we are going to get only three variables right so any rigid body you can only get three variables one is first order second order and third order right so first order element is going to be displacement think about it if you have a stone you throw the stone at the air and what how do you know the rate of fall by calculating the displacement isn't it second order is going to be all about velocity right and third order is going to be acceleration so the more the order keeps increasing the more the complex the problem gets into clear so any mass right any uh, rigid body that you have in uh, in multi body systems you're going to have only three deliverables one is displacement velocity and acceleration right so we're going to take up this and come up with the equation of motion and understand what are the things that affects the motion of your sprung mass right so look at the overall equation before that we'll I'll tell you how we came here right by a good old law of f is equal to ma right as you can see here uh, i've categorized your sprung mass into two forces your force one is experiencing by your ks your suspension stiffness and damping that's your f1 and f2 right since they are opposite in nature that's a negative sign and force two experience forces that experiences 
unsprung mass, right? So this comes under negative forces and rest of them is going to be in positive, right? When you take that force and find F1, F2, F3 values, you will, you will come up with something like this. So to get the F1 value, what you'll do is you will have a KS and what are the, who are the contributors of KS? These two variables, right? So you put X and Y here. Same as for damping, you take damping and you're going to get into velocity. So I want you to notice here, whenever I touch upon stiffness, it's only displacement coming into picture. Whenever I touch upon damping, only the velocity is coming into picture. You can see the dot represents velocity and another dot represents acceleration, right? So it's always dampers are velocity sensitive in nature, whereas your springs are displacement sensitive in nature, right? They only respond to, respond to vehicle displacement. Clear? So from this, I'm gonna put up F is equal to MA and come up with the final form of equation that uh, mass times the acceleration, which is MA is equal to F, which is this F here. So I'm going to equate the whole F minus F1 minus F2 and same as for, so this is for sprung, this is for unsprung, right? So that if you put up all the equation, you will end up in one big equation like this. So what's the point in arriving to this equation? That is more important, right? So take a look at it. This equation says so many things. First is your mass and your acceleration. You know, they both are uh, same variable. Second is gonna be your damper. Your damper is gonna be hugely affected by the velocity that the two body experiencing. That's why you have an X dot minus Y dot here, right? So this is gonna be your velocity sensitive device. Wherever you see damper, you will also see all the velocity components, same as for the spring. Wherever you see a spring, you'll also see a displacement of displacement component, such as well, displacement of your sprung mass, displacement of your unsprung mass, and R is gonna be a road input, right? So by doing this approach, you will easily identify, by the end of this model, or the end of this approach, you'll easily identify what is the displacement, acceleration, velocity of sprung mass and unsprung mass which in turn will get give you a big picture how much of comfortness that your vehicle is going to give you right so that's the conclusion for this video